cause I'm back again. I'm, I'm, I'm reading Hit the light like button, fool. What up, everybody? It's your favorite rapping expedite, T. Swin. Now they're rolling, man. It's in the head to, from the east to the south. I'm on my way back to Texas. Now, uh, the boy, fresh and clean. Thanks to Carlos at uh, Prestige Barbershop out there in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. You know, I'm looking GQ. Uh, man, the other day, uh, somebody hit me up. They were telling me they was wanting to start a cargo van business. And they had already got their LLC, the DBA, uh, DOT MC number. And uh, they was wanting to, you know, have their own thing and, you know, get their own loads. Now, one thing about that is, though, if you, you know, you come into this, if you don't already have, like, a dedicated lane or anything like that, man, uh, you're going to be looking for loads under your own authority. It's going to be hard uh, hard to get them sometimes because your authority won't be mature enough. A lot of times, these brokers and stuff won't work with you unless your authority is 90 days old. Some some brokers, even six months to a year, uh, how mature your authority has to be. So, but your van still needs to make money while your, while your authority is still maturing. So, sign on with the company, man. Sign on with a company, find you some contracts or something like that, so you can make money until your authority matures, and you can hit the low boards up or you know uh, build more relationships with these brokers. So there, um, there are some companies that do work with brand new authorities straight out the gate. Uh, one of those companies is Nolan Transportation. They will work with a brand new authority, but they also do a thing where like you know. They'll work with you if you use their uh, their factoring company. You know, you sign on with their factoring company, which is OTR Capital, and then you have access to their load boards. And uh, so, when a lot of people ask me, man, what are good load boards for uh, Sprinter vans, cargo vans? So you got selectors. You got uh, my virtual fleet. You know, you got a. Uh, you know, DAT, truck stop. Uh, these are uh, these are low boards I use. You know, that's how I find that's how I find my freight when I'm going under my own authority. You know, I'm also signed on, like I say, with uh, other companies. So their dispatcher department, you know, hit me up. I tell them I'm available. They hit me up with loads. They text message me or they call me. And they ask me, do I want to take a load? Or, you know, they ask me, you know, what's my rate? What I do? They give me the information. And then, uh, I, you know, I'll either win it, they bid on it or whatever, and they give me the load. So that's one thing you got to think about. That. You got to figure out how you're going to make money with your van when you get it. You, you can get a van to sign, sign on somebody and make money and start making money from straight out the gate. You know? So that's, uh, you know, that's how you get started. Be an owner operator, or you can sign on with somebody. There are lots of companies. When you just sign, sign on, you got a van, you just, you're trying to sign on. There's lots of companies that are doing that. You can find them on Indeed.com. Just go on Indeed.com and type in uh, Sprinter Van, owner operator, cargo van, owner operator, and companies will pop up. You know? Uh, a lot of times, these companies, some of them do quick pay. You haul the load, you get paid in 24 to 48 hours. You know? Or you might get paid on a Friday, Friday of that week. Some companies, if you don't have uh, the load, the work completed by a certain day of the week, you might not see it at, to that following Friday. Like one of the companies, if you know if the loads haven't been completed by eight o'clock on Wednesday, if you haul anything else, you're not gonna see that money till next Friday. But if the loads are completed prior to eight o'clock on Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, or that morning on Wednesday, and you got the paperwork turned in, you will be paid on that Friday. You know. These companies gonna ask for they gonna ask for your vehicle registration. Some companies require you to have a vehicle of a certain uh, certain age, you know. I think some of them a lot. I think some of them are like 2015 or newer. They want to know the measurements of your uh, of your vehicle. Uh, you gotta fill out a W9. Uh, if you got any endorsements or any kind of certifications, you got a Twit card. Let them know that. If you got hazmat endorsement, let them know that. If you got a passport. Let them know that. You know, so that gives you better opportunities for freight. 
so they can, uh, you know, you can you can give yourself a niche. And you have a better chance to get lows next to the uh, over the other guy, you know. Uh, like I say, make sure you have PPE. Sometimes before you can even come on the property of a place, you got to have a hard hat, safety lens, a safety vest. Uh, sometimes it might even require you to have FRCs, fire retardant uh, uh, clothing. You know, sometimes you go into chemical plants, stuff like that. Uh, steel toe boots, you know, keep that with you in your van. Make sure you have straps. Me, myself, I have eight straps in my vehicle. So a lot of times you'll see that when you're looking at these jobs. They, you know, they say must have a certain number of straps. You know, but when you when you haul and stuff, you want to make sure it's secure. You want to protect the freight. You want to protect yourself. You know, uh, I think was it like last year? There was a guy. He uh, he died. Freight wasn't secured, uh, and it crushed him. He got in an accident and it crushed him. You know, so secure that freight. Now, I've been studying. Uh, you know, I was studying. I got my uh, CDL permit. You know, after the first 50 miles, you're supposed to you're supposed to pull over and check your freight because you know vibration and, and movement and stuff is gonna make things get loose. So after the first 50 miles, you're supposed to check. You're supposed to check that your freight is secure. And after that, it's like every three hours, every 150 miles, if I'm not mistaken. Make sure your make sure your load is secure. Do that. If you've never done this, man, if you've never done anything, man, you know, get familiar with ratchet straps. You know, somebody that got some. Go to the store, play around with it. Figure out how they work. Cause when you get your job, you don't want to like you don't want to look like you don't know what you're doing. You know, uh, I have retractable ratchet straps, so I don't have to deal with like putting them in together and all this and loose and loose bands hanging everywhere. You know, I don't have to deal with that. Uh, you can go on the DOT website, and they will show you how to properly secure freight. They got diagrams and drawings to show you where your load should be. You know what I'm saying? Where you want to position? What's the best place to position? And how it should be, should, should be secured. Now, when you're dealing with big trucks, no less than two straps on the on the on the product, the freight. You know. Sometimes you know you can, you can get away with it. All depending, that freight might be real light, and that strap holds over like two thousand pounds, you know, or more. That strap is gonna hold it in place, you know. So, you know, understand that, uh, get familiar with your vehicle. You know what I'm saying? Some of, some of y'all might have never driven a vehicle this long before. So get familiar with your vehicle before you go out there and tear it up because you're trying to drive it like a compact car. Get used to making a little bit wider turns and stuff like that and watching the, watching the ass end of your vehicle. You know, I see a lot of guys look like they ran into like poles and posts. They got dents in the side of their van, you know. Now always go off your rear view camera, use your mirrors, you know, depending on what kind of weather you in, you might not be able to see out that rear view camera. Get familiar with your vehicle. Know your measurements. You know, you might be talking on the phone with a broker and and uh, they might say, oh man, we don't want a, a Sprinter van, and now a Sprinter van won't work. You know your measurements, you know that product will fit inside your vehicle. You know, say, hey, now nah, my vehicle is this length, this length. That will fit, that will fit easy in here. Is this, is this length, is this width, is this height? I haul this many pounds. I can get it there in this amount of time. Because we don't have any drive time restrictions. So most of the time, we can get, most of the time, almost all the time, we'll get freight that faster than a, a box truck or a semi truck. So know, know your equipment. You know what I'm saying? I've gotten a lot of loads like that where they were for a semi truck, but the freight fits in my van. And because I can get it there, and, 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 and it's inside, it's not it's not exposed to the weather. Uh, I can get there and get it quicker. I've gotten loads, and then some of these like, man, I didn't know we could do that with with a, with a Sprinter van or a cargo van. And now I built a relationship, so now they know they got something like that. They can give me a call. You know, don't count yourself don't count yourself out as soon as you hear as soon as you hear the word no. Know your stuff. And. Uh, that's my little spiel for today. It's your guy T. Swin. Make sure you hit the like button if you like the information that's getting put out, man. You like the music. Make sure you hit the like button, man. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. It's your guy T. Swin. I'm out. Stumping with my tux on, trying to get my bucks on. Name on my hoodie, bumping all these, but they goodies in the stingers like a bully. I'm the big dog. Big dog.
If you ain't rockin' with me, then forget y'all Dodging all the pitfalls and booby traps The coolest cat riding in the cargo van Up and down your Google Maps Double tap, double tape, grind till you elevate Give thanks and celebrate The neighbors think I'm selling weight Yeah, I had to set them straight T-Swin the pioneer Money in the van, I want the biggest piece of pine here Homie, I ain't dying here You know what, I'm supplying here A breath of fresh air and a way to get by in here This maze we call life One wall and fill another We all going through it Show some love to your brother Show some love. X marks the spot and the X for expediter While I'm listening to some Pac My ambitions as a rider